Hi everyone, hi Verbling. Hope you're all having a great day today. This is class number two. Oops. This is class number two of five classes today that we are doing on homonyms. And the best thing about homonyms is you will learn a lot of new vocabulary. So um, a homonym, very quickly, is a word that sounds the same as another word, but they are different spellings and different definitions. Hi, Andre. Hi. How are you Hi. doing? Hi. Good. How are you doing? I'm, I'm pretty good. Good. Andre, I thought that, um, did you not have a reservation to the last class? I, I did, but uh, I needed to go out a little, mm. and uh, I changed my reservation for right now. Oh, okay. That's good. That's okay. <laughs> yes, but uh, so far so good now. Good, good, good. Um, okay, great. And we have, uh, um, is it Beria? Beria? Oh, Beria, for some reason I can't hear you. Um, maybe you are on mute. There's a little red button here, red button at the top of your screen. Hi. Oh, there you are. Hi, how are you doing today? Fine, good. <laughs> good. Um, Maria, could you please move your microphone away from your mouth a little bit? Just move it away because it, I can hear you. <sighs> <laughs> okay, okay, sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Sorry. That's okay, no problem. How are you doing today? Mm, good. I'm waiting your listen about two, 13 minutes ago. Good, good. And did you find that you learned a lot of new words or what did you think? Mm, I want to, to learn some something. Good, good. And we have uh, Hamid. Welcome back. Hamid, how are you doing today? Thank you. I'm okay. What about you? Good. I'm very good. Thank you. And we have Mohammed. Hi, Mohammed. Mohammed, can you hear me? Hmm. Mohammed, I cannot. Yeah, hear yeah, yeah. Oh. I hear you. Good, good. How are you doing today? I'm fine. I'm very good. Thank you. Good. And we have uh, Talita. You made it back into this class. Yes, I got it. <laughs> oh, you are so positive. <laughs> Always nice to have you. I, I don't live here. I don't live here. <laughs> Where do you live? No, uh, I don't. Um, I don't know how to, to explain. Leave the class. Oh, you didn't leave. Yeah. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'll, I should probably explain that. When someone says "gotcha," sounds like this. Gotcha. What does that mean? Uh, that's I it. I understand you. I Good. Understand you. Yes. It's like that's it. Yes. So gotcha means got ya, which is like I got ya or I understand you. So if anyone ever says gotcha, gotcha, that means um, I totally understand what you're saying. Good, good. And we have uh, Victor. Hi, Victor. Hi, how are you, Lauren? I'm good. How are you doing today? Welcome back. Yeah, I'm doing well, thank you. Good, good. And we have, um, is that Anto? Ato? Oh, no, Anton. My name is Anton. Anton, okay. How are you doing, Anton? I'm fine, thank you. Good, good. And I think we've said hello to almost everyone. Oh, we have Ali. Hi, Ali. I'm fine, and how about you? I'm good, I'm good, thank you. Good. So, as you all know, I think I've said hello to everyone. I'm just going to make sure. Oh, I haven't said hello to Federica. Hi, Federica. Hi, Lauren. Hi. Hi, how are you doing today? Fine, thanks. What about you? Very good, very good. Thank you. Good. So, as you know, um, we are doing homonyms. So, who wants to try to explain what a homonym is? I've already Me. explained it, but yes, Andre. Uh, for example, uh, if it two, uh, in, in my I understand, if it two people has the the same name, they are uh, homonyms. 
Yeah. Yep. For so example. it's like two words that sound the same. But let's say we have words like your and your, spelled like this. Your and your. What's There's something about them that's the same and something about them that's different, right? Yes. Yeah. So that's exactly it. So Andre was saying it's like two things, two words that sound the exact same, but their meaning is different. The definitions are different. So or get... or uh, can be two people have the same name too? It could be, but for example, you might have the name Andre spelled like this, but someone else might have the same name spelled like this. Ah, okay. Right? So they are kind of, they are actually kind of, uh, I don't know if we'd use homonyms for names, but um, technically, I mean, there are two things that sound the same that have different people, different definitions. You okay. are Andre, but this person's also Andre, and they're a different person. But okay. I would, I would stick with homonyms more so with words that words, not so much with names. But it's still a good example. It still gets the job done. <laughs> okay. Um. Good. Oh, there you go. So we have Laurent, or Laurent, Laurent, maybe Laurent. Is it French? I think I'm pronouncing that the same. So Laurent, he is a man, and his name is pronounced or is very similar to my name, which is Lauren. But um, we are obviously different people. This is yes. Yeah, so good, good examples. Um, okay, and Talita, no problem. I'll actually just tell everyone this right now. If you ever have a bad internet connection, sometimes it is best to turn your camera off. It is always nice to have your camera on because it is nice to interact and talk. But if you have a bad internet connection, if you turn your camera off, sometimes it's really it gets a better connection for you. Um, okay, we are going to continue where we left off last class. Has every Everyone seen the link that I posted? I'll post it one more time in the chat right now, and I'll also post it in the Google chat. So all of the changes that I am making on this document as our class as our classes happen every hour, I am saving them. So if you go back to that link tomorrow or in an hour, all of the changes I'm making on my screen share will be on the same document. So um, don't feel that you need to type out everything I'm saying and everything I'm typing because I am saving it to the document. So you can look at that later. Okay. So let's start. We just finished our last class with sense, sense, and sense. Um, so let's move to cereal and cereal. These are pretty, uh, you won't see this one very often, but this is a common spelling error. When people mean to say this kind of cereal, like grains, what time of the day do we eat cereal? Breakfast. Yes, breakfast food, right? Normally, well, I shouldn't say normally, but I know in North America it is had with milk had with milk or yogurt? Or honey. Yeah, oh, it's so good with honey, yes. Milk, oops, yogurt, honey, or whatever you want to, or whatever you want to eat it with. Right? That's what this spelling is, cereal. Cereal, this one, spells, sounds the exact same, but it means numbers and sequence. So sometimes um, we have, um, I will show you an example of a serial number, I'm trying to find one. Oh, okay, so this is a serial number. When you see one of these things, there it's... is, oh wait, okay, so when you see one of these things, that is the serial number, right here. It's a code bar. Code, yes, barcode. Mm -hmm. Yes, so that is a serial number. That just means they are numbers, numbers in a sequence, numbers in order. 
but you will not see that number very that that word very often. It's just important that you know the difference in spelling so that you do not call the breakfast food spelled with an S because that is incorrect. So this is the one you will see most often, cereal like this. Okay, this Lauren, one, yep. Um, for example, uh, we have a Harry, Harry Potter's book. Mm -hmm. uh, one, two, three, this is a, a, a kind of example of cereal, cereal book. Or no? Ah, yeah. Yes, it is. Uh, we um, very, very good example. We don't use that expression when we talk about cereal like that, but it it works. You are completely correct. You could say um, he he writes cereal books, which means cereal. There are many of them, but unfortunately, the reason we don't use the word cereal with an S very often, so S E R I A L, is because Hamid just put it in the chat. It is normally used for a serial killer, so a murderer. A murderer who kills many people. That is, so many people all, uh, you, for example, this is a not happy topic, but if someone kills many people in one time, they are not a serial killer. If someone kills someone and then they kill another person later and then they kill another person a week later, they are considered a serial killer because they are doing them one at a time at a time. Mm -hmm. okay, so that's a gotcha. like serial killer or murderer. So that is why I think people don't use that word serial very often unless we're talking about a serial number which is like the barcode that I told you, that I showed you on the screen. And, and how how can I use the the uh, to to explain no to to explain the the books? Uh, you the would example. say series. Series. Okay. Series. Great question. Series. That is like in order. So if you have a TV series. TV okay. series. Let's say, what is a TV series that you know of? Friends. Uh, Friends. 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 Once upon a time. Yeah. So we have we have a TV show which is Friends, and they have a series. They have a, one show every week. So they have a series of shows. They do not just have one show. They have many shows in a series. Okay, I gotcha. Good, good. And yes, the Harry Potter series. Very, very common to. See say that the Harry Potter series the the Twilight series oh yes. <laughs> yes or how I met your mother series these are all series of things that are all in order but the word serial I would not use it because normally that means it's normally used with the word serial killer okay. um okay let's move on then good questions we have session and session. Okay. We are in one of these right now, this kind of session. A session means like a time that you're getting together. That you are, well, either getting together, together with others or just getting or just doing something really. So, for example, we are all in a verbling session right now. Can someone think of another example of how you would use a session in a sentence? Uh, the <coughs> government will have a session tomorrow. Good, good. So the govern, oops, government will have a session tomorrow to discuss whatever. Right? So that means they are going to get together to do something. And it is a funny word because uh, um, it, it just means you are going to do something. You can have a session even if you are not doing it with other people. You can say, I have planned a, um, 
I have planned a workout session tomorrow. Tomorrow I will go to the gym and I will have a session. Someone in the chat is saying um, a surf ride session. Yes, you can have a session, S-E-S-S-I-O-N, with an instructor teaching you how to surf or teaching you how to speak English. So a session is like a time when you set a time to do something. I have set a time to work out. So I have my workout sessions planned this week. I'm going to be going to the gym at these times. Can I use session uh, to talk about cinema? Yes. Yep, you, you can say that you are uh, having a session of watching movies with your friends. So you're going to sit down and have a good session watching movies. Yes. Okay. Yes, it is more often used for things that are not, uh, for things that are, I'm sorry, it is most commonly used for things where you are learning something. So I have a English session, learning English, sorry, I have a verb link session tomorrow, something like that. It is like a time you are planning to get together and do something. Um, any questions about that word, S-E-S-S-I-O-N? No? Good. And we have, then we have this one, session. Session. This is like giving up to something. So, um, for example, can anyone think of how, how they could use this word in a sentence? The section. The, the first one? Yeah. C-E-S-S-I-O-N. Uh, I did it a section uh, of my terrain. Pardon me? I did a section uh, of my terrain. Of my, one more time, of my? Terrain or ground, ground. Session, oh, like to, uh, um, you're like, saying you're. S like this. Terrain. Terrain. Oh, so like session, giving up terrain. Oh, I see what you're saying. So giving up land. Yes. Yes. So Andre is saying um, the uh, Mexico's, you could say like Mexico's session to the United States. Yes. Right? That means yes. that they have given, so giving... Yeah. I need to work session to complete my work. Yes, so Berla, hi Berla, how are you doing today? Fine, good. Good, um, so that would be for this kind of session, right? So that would be for that kind. But for this one, for C-E-S-S-I-O-N, that would be like, um, specially land. So giving up something especially land. So normally used in something like, um, for example, Mexico's session of land to the United States. Right? So they, they had to give up land to the United States. Right? That's what that kind of means. That means like giving over something to someone. California, yes. Yes, good. Any questions about these two words? And you won't see this one very often. The most uh, important word here is for you to know this one and to know how to spell it. So don't spell it like this, but make sure you know that this one, session. Questions about that, anyone? Uh, L Lauren in the, sh in the chat bo box uh, said we can go at the first section this, e this evening. It is correct. This is yeah, correct. yeah, yeah. So that's Lo Lohan, right? Yeah. Lohan, Lohan says that. Yes, great. <laughs> Sorry. That's okay. That's okay. Oh, that's so funny. Yes, so everyone, just so you know, Lohan with a T at the end is not me. <laughs> that is someone else. So there is Lohan, who is a student, and Lauren, who is me, in the chat right now. 
I'm just making sure that's there <laughs> so everyone knows. Okay. So um, then there's this one, chance and chance. This one has a T, but we actually pronounce it the exact same way as we pronounce chance. Chance and chance. You know this word, chance. Um, oh, I don't know why this is there. So something that happens unexpectedly. So I, by chance, I ran into my friend at the grocery store. I, I saw my friend by chance. Or you could say when someone, um, when someone does not want to be friends with you anymore, you can say, oh, give me another chance. <laughs> <laughs> or we can say, uh, by chance, I won lottery. Yes, yes. Good, yes. Good, and then we have, do, has anyone ever seen this word before, chance, like that? That's a plural of chant. Uh, chant, no. it's, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's when people speak a lot, I don't know, bad, bad things or silly things. Oh, interesting. Yes, okay, Andre, remember that, remember that. I'm going to put it down right after I write the definition. So yes, but has anyone else seen this word before? And does anyone else have an idea of what that might mean? No. Uh, we can use uh, in the stadium or the concerts. Yes. So, and in churches. Uh, soccer game, too. Yes. So, let's say, used in Party. churches. So a chant, a chant, oops, is when many people sing, uh, yell, or say the same thing at the same time. Or so political yeah. speech too? Political, hmm, yes. Speech. Yeah, see, that's really interesting, Andre, because in Canada, for example, when we have political, um, I guess we call them rallies, so when many people are getting together to watch a politician speak, we do not have many people calling, calling things out very loud. We have people clapping, but in other countries, they do. They have chants. So it is like, often it is like singing something out, like in church, for example, they might have it. They might be singing chants, but normally we hear chants like "Let's go Blue Jays, let's go, let's go Blue Jays, let's go." Ah, Lakers game. I yeah. Uh, they they said defense, defense. Yes, yes, exactly. So when everyone, everyone in the crowd is watching. Uh, the Lakers game, they'll say defense. Yes, I defense. That. Yep. They so many people all at the same time say it. That's what a chant is. So Andre was saying before a good example of how people use the word chance sometimes is um um sorry not chance but yes chance with the T so C H A N T S can be when someone is making fun of someone. So, sorry, not someone, but many people. When many people... I'm putting this in the chat for you. When many people are making fun of, of someone. So, let's say there is one, one person here, one child, and there are many children over here. And all of these children are making fun of this person. They're saying, you're stupid, you're dumb, no one oh, likes yeah. you. This is called, uh, they were calling chance at this person, which okay. means it is a negative thing. Like so, bullying. Bullying, exactly. Good, bullying. Or, uh, Lauren, uh, can we use for national anthem? <laughs> national Absolutely. anthem? 
Yes, absolutely. Good example. So um, they were chanting the national anthem. Chanting the national anthem, yes. And that means that that many people at the same time are doing this. Many people at the same time are doing this. So I'm going to put this in our document now to make sure that you all have this for your notes. So chants in this way. The most, the important part about a chant is that many people are doing it at the same time. And I'll say sometimes when people are bullying, they call chance at someone. And uh, this, is, this is not that every person is saying the same exact thing, but when they are saying very similar things, so they are saying, this person is saying you're stupid, this person is saying we don't like you, this person is saying something else, all of these things, they are not the exact same words, but they are the same thing, which means they are being mean. They're all being mean. So that's why we say they were calling chants at the boy. They were bullying the young boy by calling chants at him. Um, I just want to clarify something. Laurent in the chat is saying, in French, chants is almost always a positive word. Um, yes, in French we say uh, la bonne chance, right? Which means good luck, good chance. So whatever chance you have, it will be good. And this is true in French. In English, not as much. We don't say chance, we say luck. Luck. So we'll say good luck, I wish you good luck. Instead of, yes, yes, Hamid is saying, I wish you good fortune. Fortune. But Fortune is not always a good word. You could say, I wonder what fortune he will have. I wonder what fortune he will have. Um, Indranil, Indranil, uh, you were saying in the chat, what about chanting God's name? Chanting God's name. Um, I've never seen that happen, but yes, if someone is chanting about, if many people together are uh, calling and saying things together about God, then yes, it is, the important thing is that it is normally a group of people in the same place saying the same thing at the same time. Question? Yeah, uh, like when you were uh, in the football games and Brazil versus uh, United States, for example, and have the anthem of, the, of Brazil and we are ch 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 chanting. Yes. Yes. Okay. Good. 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 Yeah. Chanting. Yep. So you would be like chanting the the song, and um, and when we use the word like chants, like C H A N T S, you um you might say they were they were uh, saying chants about the the other team. So, for example, uh, go Brazil, go Brazil, go Brazil. Yeah. When you're all, when you're, <laughs> yeah, when you're all doing that together, you are calling chants. So, chants can be good or bad, right? Okay. Yeah. Okay. But you would be chanting if you were all singing together. Yes. Okay. Good example. And Lauren, um, uh, we can use uh, for for example uh, the pipe. Uh, is praying for something, and we can say Amen. Yes, so you can be involved with religious chants. Religious chants. So um, let's say you are in a church or a synagogue or mosque, and everyone together is singing something, or is saying something over and over and over, so repeating something or something, you are all doing it together. You are saying religious chants or religious songs or you are saying religious things. So when you're doing it together, yes, it is considered a chant. You just have to specify, Hamid, you would say religious chants. Religious chants. Good. Good. I think I got most of these questions. Anyone else questions about chants and chants? Same pronunciation. In English, we're very 
very confusing. We have a lot of words that are sound the exact same pronunciation. Okay, let's move on. So now these are uh, very important that you know how to spell them correctly. We have chaste and chaste. So this one is just the past tense, past tense of chase, right? So who can use chaste this one in a sentence? Um, I was chased by, uh, by Samuel. Yes, I was chased by a um, uh, suspicious guy. By a suspicious, yes. Good, right? I was chased. That means he was running behind me and I was running and trying to get away from him. Good. Chased, spelled like this, means virginal and pure. So you, this is not used often, not common to say chaste. So chaste means pure and virginal, but not used often. It is used, have you heard of Shakespeare? Yes. Yes? Classic you have English uh, writer? Yes. William Shakespeare is the most famous English writer from uh, hundreds of years ago. Hundreds of years ago. But he, this is like an old English word, chaste. So we do not use it often. You will never hear anyone use that word. But it's important that you know not to spell chaste. So if you said, yes, I, that man, he chased me and you spell it wrong, it makes no sense. So you have to make sure you know how to spell that one correctly. Okay? Any questions about that? Any questions about that? So far, so good. Good, good. Um, okay, and I'm still trying to get most of these questions here in the chat, so I'm sorry if I'm not getting all of them. Yes, Hamid is saying, like, thou and you. Thou you will never see that word. Nobody, nobody will ever use that word. But it means you. So if I was to ever say, thou listens to me, thou listens to me, that means you listen to me. But you do not need to know the word thou because nobody will ever use it. That is like chaste, C-H-A-S-T-E. Because nobody will ever, ever use that word. <laughs> um... Okay, any questions? I think we're good. Okay, now we have choose and choose. Same pronunciation. Choose and choose. Choose just means the present tense of chew. Right? So. What chew, chew means? Sorry. Chew? Oh, so it's yeah. like it's like when you are. When you put food in your mouth, when you put food in your mouth, you are chewing. Oh, so uh, when you put I am your... chewing a gum. Yes, yes, good, good, chewing gum. So you are, so let's use this one in a sentence. He, so for example, this is grinding food in your mouth with your teeth. Right? It is what you do when you eat. You do this every time you eat. So, for example, he chews on a piece of gum every day, right? He chews on a piece of gum every day, or he chews on a piece of gum means right now he's chewing on a piece of gum. Then we have choose like this, which means to select something, so to pick something. So you know this word, right, everyone? You know this word, choose, to choose something? Yes. Yes? yes. Good, good. Good. So choose and choose. Now we have these ones. These ones are also important uh, for you to know the difference. Chile, you know this is a, this is a country, Chile. Chile. Chile, Chile. yes. We pronounce, uh, although... Although it has the e, e at the end, we pronounce that not like Chile, but Chile. And when we have uh, 
we have it st sounds the exact same as chili, chili, chili. Three different words sound the exact same. So if you ever hear someone talking about the country, they will not pronounce it like Chile, even though you see this, this E here. They will not say Chile. They will say Chile. Chile. Good. Then we have chili, which is a uh, dried pod of a red pepper. So, you know, like chili flakes. Like chili flakes. What is oh, the other... There is a band name, uh, Red Hot uh, Chili Peppers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Exactly. So it's like the Red Hot Chili Peppers, that band. Red Hot Chili Peppers. Yes, exactly. What is the other word for, um, what is the, the other definition for chili, the food? Has anyone ever tried chili, the food? Has, Sauce. Has anyone... Sauce. Yeah, lots of, it's, it's pretty much like sauce. Um, Especially Mexican uh, sauces. Yeah, yeah, very often, yes. So it is a Mexican dish, I think, Mexican, and it has like ground beef, red kidney beans, so red kidney. I'm putting the recipe in here in case you, um, you want to imagine it. It has uh, a can of tomatoes and, and tomato sauce and sauce. And spices and spices like Mexican spices. Very strong. Yes, yes, and and the way that we eat that, it is not a sauce, but it looks like meat sauce. It looks just like meat sauce. So we take it and we put it in a bowl. We put it in a bowl like this, and we eat it with a spoon. We eat it with a spoon like this. So. That is how, that is a dish that you will see probably very often here, especially in Canada and the United States. We eat a lot of chili. And that is, Lauren, uh, it fumes our ears. It fumes our ears. It, it fumes out of your ears? Yes, uh, I make a joke. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought you said. That's so funny. Yeah, so... <laughs> so Hamita is saying it's so spicy, it's so spicy that it it's like it's feeling out of your ears like this, <laughs> like the, the like a cartoon. Yes, like a cartoon exactly. <laughs> yep. So chilies are very spicy. Um, then we have chili like this, which means uncomfortably cool, which means it's it's cold outside, like fur. It's chilly tonight. The, the person that feels a lot of cold all the yes. time. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So you're cold, and let's say it is, not, it is not very cold, but it's just a little bit uncomfortable cold. And you'll say, oh, it's chilly. It's chilly out. Chilly just means cold. Exact same word. Chilly, cold. The word chill... The word chill means to cool. Oh, I'll just finish this. The expression that says chill out. Yeah, exactly. So um, I'm just going to say note. To chill means to cool off. So you wait for your soup to chill, cool down, right? before you eat it. So now we have the expression to chill out. Lauren, uh, can we use for uh, drunk people uh, chili? No. No. Um, like if, for people who are drunk? You said drunk, right? Yes. Yes, uh, no. Well, in what way? Like, uh, what about, can you try to use that in an expression? Uh, for example, this person is uh, very uh, drunk. Uh-huh. Uh, and what can I uh, do for him? Um, 
You wouldn't use the word chili for that. You wouldn't use the word chili for that. That uh, chili is actually it just means for something to be cold. So if the drunk person is cold, <laughs> they might say, "Well, I'm so chilly." Uh, Lauren. Yes. Uh, for example, if you are a, a little sick mm -hmm. and the, you are feeling fever in your body, yes. And the, after you starting to feel cold, I I can say that yeah. too. Exactly. Yeah. Great example, Andre. Yeah, that's perfect. So if you have a fever, sometimes you are very hot. You start sweating. So you start sweating because you are so hot. And then you get cold again and you become chilly. You become yes. chilly. You can use the word chilly anytime you use the word cold. So it's cold outside. It's chilly outside. I'm feeling cold. I'm feeling chilly. Ooh, it's chilly. It's chilly in here. So you or, can use the word. Or if you went out to your, of your swimming, swimming, swimming pool. Yes, you, you come out of the swimming pool. You are very chilly. I'm so chilly right now. Yes. Yes, good, good. Um, okay. So, yes, that expression there, to chill out. To chill out. Who said that? Was that? Who said that? That's me. Uh, take it easy. Larissa, yes. Yes, exactly. So I put that in here. I said, um, we have this expression here, like, chill out. Oh, my gosh. Chill out. That means, like, take it easy. You are telling someone to cool off or stop being angry or stressed out. means the same as take it easy. Right? So let's say someone is very stressed, very nervous, very anything, too much, too much, um, we say high strung, just uh, uh, whatever, it can be angry, it can be crazy, it can be, uh, maybe they're very excited and they're just, uh, whatever it is, if they're too much of something, we say chill out, chill out, okay, you're, 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 going crazy, you are too excited, or you're too angry, you are too whatever. Chill out. Take it easy. Take it easy. Okay? You may have heard the expression, easy tiger. Have you heard that expression? That's easy another. Tiger. Yes. Easy tiger. This means chill out or take it easy. This is like Whoa, whoa, easy, tiger. Like, don't get too excited. Oh, okay. Calm down. I should put that in here as well. So, chill out means calm down. Uh, this means calm down. Good. Okay, good. So now let's move to these ones. We have sight, sight, and sight. We looked at these we, uh, we looked at these words on the uh, last week's classes, but I'll just go over them quickly again. So, uh, Andre, I think you were at some of those classes, weren't you? I know some of you were. I think that uh, maybe oh, I don't remember who was actually there, but. Andre, were you there when we talked about sight, sight, and sight? Uh, Maybe not. I don't remember. No? Okay, and I just want to quickly say hello. We have a whole bunch of new people. Hi. Um, um, we have Larissa. Hi. Wait, Larissa, you've been here the whole time, though, haven't you? What? Were you in class for the full hour? No, no. No, I, you came in a little... I got late. here in the middle of the class. Ah, okay. Good, good, good. So you're here now. And we also have Laurent. You finally got into the class. Hello. What? How are you? Excuse me. <laughs> I said, good, you finally got into the class. Yeah, I, yeah. Good. I, yeah. Good, good. And we also have Victor. Oh, you've, you've been here all class, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and we have Yanina. Hi, Yanina. Hi. Hi. Okay, so let's continue then. So we have sight, sight, and sight. If you are talking about an internet location, 
you are talking about an internet site. So intern, internet location is an internet site. For example, Verbling is wonderful uh, uh, website uh, to learn English. Exactly. Great. Thank you. So I like that. <laughs> Verbling is a wonderful website to learn English. Great. Thank you, Hamid. So you, and just so everyone knows, internet and web, I think you probably know this, internet and web mean the same thing. Okay. What the web, especially about uh, for spiders. What was that? One more time. Uh, web is about uh, spiders. Yes, yes, very true. And Hamid, that's a great, um, that's a great uh, comparison because a spider has a web that you, a tiny spider here, spins web and it go, uh, a web and it goes everywhere, right? That's like the internet. The yes, internet. Yes, network. Network. Yes, networking. So the internet, you can have one person right here, and they're talking to people all over the world, right? And then you have this person makes a website which has information from this website and this website, and oh. it's a huge web, like a spider, like a spider web. Yes, or networking cell phone too. Yes, exactly. Networking and creating a web, like with your cell phones, good example. Also television too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You wouldn't. Um, web is more accurate for the um, for the if you're talking about an internet site. That's more common if you want to talk about the web. Like if you want to talk about the. Sorry, I'm making no sense right now. <laughs> if you're talking about an internet site, that's more like an inter a website. But you wouldn't talk about TV or cell phones as much with a web as you would talk about the internet. But these are all networking things. So that's correct. I'm just clarifying that for the viewers. Um, okay, and then we have site, which is vision. Can somebody think of something, an example where you would use vision in a sentence? Uh, the president of the company needs to be uh, needs to have a vision to achieve the goals. What was that? One more time. The president of the company uh, needs to have a vision to achieve the goals. Yeah, so that works great for vision, but let's try to make that into sight. Or sight. Mm -hmm. uh, can I try? To, need to have a sight. You know what, okay, um, I'm just going to fix your sentence for a second because, Andre, you can actually do foresight, foresight. Oh, yes. And foresight has this word sight in it, but for means before, right? Oh, okay. For yes. means before. So if you ever see this like this, like for, that means before. So you must be able to see things before they happen. That's what foresight means. Predict. To be successful. Foreseen. Yes. I, so you can say that problem was already foreseen. That means we knew the problem was going to happen before it happened. But was it Hamid, did someone want to try giving another example for sight? Uh, there are uh, many sightseeing uh, places uh, to visit in Turkey. Great. Oops. Good, good. And you know, I think you know this already, but I just want everyone who doesn't know this, Turkey... Uh, yeah. Uh, I just have a question. Uh, sight, yes. um, is it just uh, a noon or uh, can be a verb too? Yes, it is only a noun. Good question. Uh, so sight okay. is only a noun. I'm just putting that in here because um, you would say, you would not say I sighted that. You would say I saw that yeah. sight. Okay. A sight is a thing. So it is like a thing. That's what I mean by a noun. Okay. Things, right? Science. So 
For example, a beautiful sight. A beautiful sight. Or a, oh, here's a good one. A blind person has lost their sight. This means they have lost their vision. And uh, could you say, um, I want to take a sight of this book in order to, uh, to know if you like or dislike the book? Oh, I see what you're saying. Um, generally, you wouldn't use that particular uh, word for that because a sight is like... Um, uh, it's hard to explain uh, why you wouldn't use that for a book because a sight is like a thing in nature. So, uh, not necessarily in nature, but like. It's hard Lauren, to explain I think, why. Uh, but I think uh, Victor's uh, mean is uh, view. A yeah. sneak peek or a sneak like, peek or outlook. No? Um, yeah, like you're thinking CRDs. kind of like to view, to view. But I'm going to yeah. teach you a new word right now. To take a survey like this. Hang on. Like this. Oh, why is it not working? S U R V E Y. So to take a sur. Survey of the book or to survey the book. This is what a survey is. When you, you can use it as a verb or a noun. When you have someone come to your house and they say, Hello, I am doing a survey. I am talking to everyone in the neighborhood, you and everyone who lives in this area. What do you think about the government? Is the government doing a good job? You will say yes or no. They will put you on the survey and say, okay, 50% of the people who live in this area do not agree with the government. There's an example of survey, which means you are, not, you are taking a small amount of information to see a general idea of what people think. It's a kind of search? Sort of. It can be. It can be. But the word survey means to, so if you're saying, um, Victor, if you're saying, I want to take a survey of this book to see if I like it. That means, similarly to what Andre is saying, you're going to quickly look through the book, not every page, but you will look through. So if I want to survey through this book, I'll say, okay, um, yeah, it looks pretty good. Okay, I'll get it. I'll get this book. Just an uh, overview. Yes. Good, good. Yeah, that's my idea. A survey is like an overview. And what Loden? Yes? Uh, uh, survey and questionnaires are the uh, same or not? Sometimes, yes. Yes, because a questionnaire might be only an overview of the big issue, of the big problem, or you might only give the questionnaire to some people who live in the neighborhood, but not everyone. Well, right? What is the difference between scan and survey? Good, good, good example. So scan is almost the same thing. Almost the same thing. Same. Yes, so you can use survey as a verb or a noun. Um, and it means very similar to, oh, meaning is very similar. Meaning is very similar to scan. Great example. Thank you very much for, is it Beria? Burla. Burla. Okay. Yes, good. So survey I just put here in the chat, and I'll put it in our document as well. It is uh, an overview. So you can survey, you can use survey as a verb or noun and it means something very similar to scan so I'm going to scan I'm going to scan the neighborhood and see what they think the government is doing or see what they think um, the neighborhood needs to improve or I will 
survey or scan the students to see what they th I will scan all verbally students to see what they think we as uh, we verbally teachers should teach what do most students think so you can use those words right there good good and um, Karim in the chat can you please make sure you're typing in English because we we do like to encourage only uh, always practicing your English on this site. Um, okay, so website is spelled with an S like this. Site like this is spelled S I G H T, so that is when you're seeing something. And C I T E. So C I T E means to refer to something okay. or someone. It's like to quote. Yes. Or, for example, uh, uh, I am doing my academic work. I need to cite the writers. Perfect. So let's use this in a sentence. As I was completing, oops, completing my academic work, I had to cite the sources I was using in my paper, right? or in my re report or something. So that's a really good example. When you are making a academic, uh, you are writing an academic document or academic paper, you would not be able to use any information unless you said, well, I am using Professor Smith's information. This is Professor Smith's book. When I write my paper, I'm going to look at his book but I must cite his name. No, okay. Paul, Pauline Lowering, 2013, the, the English learners are very smart, for example. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So 2000, in 2013, this person said this about people who are speaking English, and you would put in brackets, so it might look like, like this, for example. Um, Oops. So this person says da 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 da. Period, and then you would cite who they were. So Smith. This is a when you cite something. So you say this person said this, and this is who said it. So you must cite who said your information. Any questions about that? Can no. I use? Can we use, uh, 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 for example, uh, I am citing uh, Verblink website uh, for people to learn English. Um, which site are you talking about? C I T E. Yes, first one. Only if you are taking information. So you let's say let's say here's a good example. You are using the document right now that. Lauren Walt, so that Lauren, me, verbaling teacher Lauren, made. Hamid, if you want to take my document and go and teach English to other people using my document, you must cite that you are using my material. So you must not say, look at this, look what I made. You must say, this is what we are using and it was made by verbaling teacher Lauren. So you just need to cite who you, you are plagiarizing <laughs> good good yes Larissa exactly if you do not cite you are plagiarizing if you do not cite information and also for copyrights yes this is called plagiarizing and you would be um, you would be what breaking copyrights Copy rights. Good. Do, any more okay. questions about site, site, yes. and site? Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, you 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 wrote the definition of site is to refer to. Uh, could you could we use it like a remember? You you know you refer to um, uh, a last uh, action or something like this. 
a last action. Well, uh, like a. Or like a, um, I tr I try to to make a sentence. Um, like uh, when I see this beautiful sight, uh, that sights me uh, my last thirty days. Oh, I see what you say. You mean no? You wouldn't use it for that. You would say it reminds me. It reminds uh, me, right? So you okay. would say um, this site s i g h t, right? This site mm -hmm. reminds yeah. me of this vacation. Okay. Yes. Good. Good. Thanks. Good question. Good. Um. Well, our class is up, so I'm going to say goodbye to you all now. But I'm going to be saving this document. So all the changes, everything you've watched me type is in the document. So stay tuned. We have three more classes later on uh, doing these homonyms and new vocabulary. Okay. Good. Okay. Good. Thank and you. I'll just, um, you're welcome. And I'll just uh, give you my information if you'd like to follow me on Verbling or check out my Facebook page. And um, See you all next class, hopefully. Thanks See you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations Bye. of your uh, one Take care. thousand followers. <laughs> Thank you. Oh my gosh, really? One thousand uh, thirty-two followers. Crazy. Well, that's exciting. Thank you all. You're all making me blush. <laughs> Thank you all and have a great day. Bye-bye. <laughs>